Today's Daily Dose of Math is about the rhombus. We'll look at the basics of a rhombus. The definition of a rhombus is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides. In this diagram of a blue rhombus, we can see that there are little lines on each of the four sides, and these are meant to indicate that these four sides are congruent. They are equal in length. You might ask, what about a square? Is a square a rhombus? And the answer is yes. Because a square has four congruent sides, all squares are also rhombuses. You can also ask, is a rhombus a square? And of course, the answer is not necessarily. A rhombus has four congruent sides, which is necessary to be a square, but a rhombus does not have to have any internal 90 degree angles. At least one internal 90 degree angle is necessary for a shape to be a square. So most rhombuses are not squares, but all squares are rhombuses. We're answering the question, is a rhombus also a parallelogram? And is a parallelogram also a rhombus? To answer this question, we need to look at the definitions of each of these shapes. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposite congruent sides. We can see that this green parallelogram is indeed a parallelogram because the little lines that we have on the short sides show us that they are congruent. And the pairs of double lines we have on the long sides show us that they are also congruent. That means the green parallelogram is following the definition of a parallelogram. But so is the blue rhombus. We can see by the little lines that all four sides of the rhombus are congruent. Therefore, it can be said to have two pairs of opposite congruent sides. That means all rhombuses are also parallelograms. The definition of a rhombus is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides. Yes, our blue rhombus is following that rule, but this green parallelogram is not. The answer to the question, is a parallelogram a rhombus, is not necessarily. Most parallelograms are not rhombuses because they do not have four congruent sides. But since all rhombuses are parallelograms, that means some parallelograms are also rhombuses. Is a rhombus a parallelogram? Yes. Is a parallelogram a rhombus? Sometimes, but not necessarily. Is a rhombus also a trapezoid? And is a trapezoid also a rhombus? Here we have a blue rhombus, and we can see that it is a rhombus because it has these little lines that show that all four sides are congruent. That's what makes it a rhombus. And we have two different yellow trapezoids. The one on the left is an isosceles trapezoid, and we can see that by the little lines that show these two opposite sides are equal in length. And we have information given that tells us that side AB is parallel to side CD, and that side BC is not parallel to side AD. This means that the leftmost of the two orange figures is an isosceles trapezoid. The one on the right is a right trapezoid. It has two internal 90 degree angles. Side AB is parallel to side CD. Side AD is not parallel to side BC. This is a trapezoid. Now, all of this is done using the definitions for the two shapes. Let's look at those definitions. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with a pair of opposite sides that are parallel and in which the remaining pair of opposite sides are not parallel. Warning. This is the exclusive definition for a trapezoid, so-called because it excludes several other shapes from being trapezoids. There is also an inclusive definition of a trapezoid, but I'm using the exclusive definition because that is what is used in the curriculum where I teach. Is the rhombus also a trapezoid? No. Why not? Because although it has a pair of opposite sides that are parallel, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. It does not have a pair of opposite sides that are not parallel. So that means a rhombus cannot be a trapezoid. Are these trapezoids rhombuses? The answer is no. The definition of a rhombus is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides. 
Neither of these trapezoids have four congruent sides. And in fact, the characteristics that make them trapezoids make it impossible for them to have four congruent sides. So the answers to today's questions are no. A rhombus is never a trapezoid, and a trapezoid is never a rhombus. So long as we are using the exclusive definition of a trapezoid. Now let's answer the question, is a rectangle also a rhombus? And is a rhombus also a rectangle? We have our green rectangle, which shows its internal 90 degree angles and its two sets of congruent sides. And we have our yellow rhombus, which shows its four congruent sides. Looking at the definitions, a rhombus is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides. So the yellow rhombus is following the rule the green rectangle is not. But can a rectangle be a rhombus? Yes, squares are also rectangles because they follow the definition of a rectangle and a square has four congruent sides. So some rectangles, the ones that are squares, are also rhombuses. Is a rhombus also a rectangle? The definition of the rectangle is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposite congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. The rhombus follows the first part of the rule. Because it has four congruent sides, it can be said to have two pairs of opposite congruent sides. But it does not necessarily have the internal 90 degree angle. So this rhombus is not a rectangle. But can a rhombus be a rectangle? Yes. Because squares are rhombuses, and squares follow all parts of the rectangle rule, those rhombuses that are also squares are also rectangles. To sum up, is a rectangle a rhombus? Not necessarily, but it can be. Is a rhombus a rectangle? Not necessarily, but it can be. This is What is a Rhombus Anyway? Today's Daily Dose of Math. Please like, subscribe, and share.